Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. Today I've got a holster on the table that we've been asked about quite a bit. So when we showed upgrading this Hellcat OSP with a Viridian E-Series and a Shield Red Dot, we started getting a lot of questions on well, what holster will fit it. And we had done that research and we only found one, Exarchy, that makes a holster, now maybe there's more at this point, but at the time, that makes a holster that would fit that gun, specifically with the E-Series lasers. There were a lot out there that would have cutouts for a red dot. You could even do that yourself. But the laser was the problem. And that's always a problem with optics enhanced guns, especially lights and lasers, is finding a holster for it. So I found this Exarchy and ordered it. And this is going to be the only negative thing I'm going to be say about this holster for the entire video. So I might as well just get it over with. It took forever to get it. The site said weeks and ended up being months. I get it. Right now, everything's everybody's buying everything that has anything to do with guns, but it was excruciatingly long getting the holster. So don't think you're going to order one of these on Monday and be able to use it to go to the ball on Saturday. It's just not going to happen that way. That's it, though. It's the only negative thing I'm going to say this entire video. Everything else about this holster is really, really nice. So this is the Patriot G2, and they do have versions of this holster for the non-Viridian laser. So, and they also have it for a number of other guns out there, but the Hellcat's the one we're talking about today. And it's an extremely well-made holster. So if you order one, once you actually get it, you're really going to like it. So first thing, we'll get this over with. Let's take the Hellcat. This is the Hellcat with the flush mag that was in there. And show you that it is an unloaded gun, so as we handle this thing. So this right here is the whole crux of the problem with finding a holster. It goes on the front of the trigger guard, and most Kydex holsters lock on the trigger guard. So if you put something on the front of it, whether it's this or the Glock with the uh, Crimson Trace ones, you have that same problem. And this has got a cutout for it, and it's formed for it, and it has this pathway for the little half moon here to ride through, and when you put it in, it holds. This is an adjustable retention holster. And the key to that is you can adjust the retention to hold the gun and to suit your personal needs. They noted on the site, or a little card that came with it, warning you to adjust it first. Right out of the box, it was pretty good. So I'm sitting here trying to shake the gun out. I am going to succeed because I'm going to shake it till it comes out. But I really had to work at it to get the gun to come out. So this gun, if it were properly installed, not upside down, a little bit of tension from the belt would stay right put. If it was too loose, you can tighten it. If it was too tight, you can loosen it. But the key is, when I want to pull it, and I grab a hold of it, can I pull it? And it pulls nice and smooth. So that is one feature that you want to look for in any Kydex holster, is the ability to adjust the retention to suit your needs and how you do your belt and everything else that goes along with it. Now this particular one, as I mentioned, is set up for the OSP, which is where all the questions were coming from. There might have a question, can I use the non-OSP version of the Hellcat in it? And in this specific holster, this version, the answer is really no. It'll go in there, but it won't retain correctly, and it will be sloppy. Now, it's not a defect in the holster. It's because the holster is designed to have this extra bulk on the front, and it works around that extra bulk. So make sure you order the one for the gun you've got. If you've got the regular one, or even if you have an OSP and you don't intend to put a laser on it, don't buy the Viridian laser version of it buy the one without it and it'll work just as well. So it's not something you buy it so I can upgrade into it. If you buy this version, go ahead and put the laser on if you want it to actually work correctly and sit where it needs to. From a materials standpoint, this one is black cowhide. They also have it in a few other colors, some a couple browns, like an antique brown and a tan. And they also have it in horsehide in an assortment of colors. And these clips you can get in the black oxide that we have here or you can get a polished nickel clip. It's kind of suits your taste. The Kydex is where it gets interesting. Most Kydex holsters come pretty much in any color you want as long as it's black or flat dark earth. These come in about 15 different colors. Everything from black like this one, your typical gun colors, your olive drab, and then the tan, and then they go all the way into pinks and blues. So you get a wide assortment of colors you can get on the Kydex itself. I know more com holster companies are starting to come out with various colors for the Kydex, but it's kind of cool that you can kind of suit it to your needs. The other thing you can look at is the cut. So this is their standard cut, and you can also get a combat cut, which would kind of come and notch it out a little bit more right along here. Now their standard cut is a little closer to some other companies' combat cut, 
a lot of standard cuts come out like along here. Well, what's that all mean? What's the importance of that? The real importance of that is how much extra room is there to grip the gun and how far over does this come to spread the tension, let's say, of the holster across your body. So which one you're going to prefer is going to be, depending on how you want to grab the gun, how much extra you there is in this area that might wrap around or kind of get pinched, and whether or not you want to be a little bit protected against the finger, because your, your finger here is the one that's really going to come in and grab the gun, and how much protection you want against clawing yourself. So that's up to you. You get to choose. They don't charge extra for either version of it, but it does give you a little bit of flexibility. So between the colors, the clips, the Kydex, and the fact that you could customize the purchase of this for whichever gun you're going to buy, the variation of the gun, it's a really flexible holster. Now, price, it's a little bit of a pricier holster. Now, there's a lot of quality built into it. Oh, the other thing I forgot to mention, all the edges, everything that is an edge is rounded. Not only on the leather, but on the Kydex, all the way wrong, and they've even filed the edges of the Kydex so they're a little rounded instead of being sharp. The screws and studs are all smooth, so nothing's going to bite into your body. But this holster is currently on their site for like 88 bucks. It'll vary a little bit depending on some of your choices you pick from the pull downs, but you're looking at about a $90 holster. The time I ordered this one, they were about 70 ish. It's probably well worth the money. If you're buying this gun, you're already you know, buying a high-end gun with some high-end accoutrements on it and you need a holster to work with it, this is actually a really good choice. It's proven to be comfortable, it's been durable, it's held up well in the amount of time we've actually been able to play with it since getting it. And just to be clear, this holster was not sent to us for a review. We ordered it, put it in the cart, paid for it, and waited for it like anybody else would. So in this case, I'm just kind of sharing with you the holster that we chose to make this gun usable and carryable. And in all likelihood, I might buy one for the non-OSP version of it because I like the holster. And you know, and as I mentioned, it won't work well to put the non-OSP in this version, so I might have to order another one. Hopefully the wait won't be quite as long. Hopefully they've kind of figured out a way to improve their supply chain process to get these in a timely manner. Beyond that, hopefully that gives you some information on how to get your OSP into service. If you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up share, subscribe, click that bell up there to be notified if you do. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, Instagram, pretty much everywhere. And thank you.